before you guys looked at antibiotic sensitivities. But there's a lot of antibacterial stuff out there, antiseptics, disinfectants, etc. And they all claim to be really good, very effective. Well, how effective are they? In this case, we're going to test it. And in order to test it, first of all, we need a TSA plate, just like we had before. But what we're going to do this time is we're going to divide it in the quadrants. We're going to divide it into four. Just take a Sharpie, draw an X on the bottom. Makes life easy. Now we need to put organism on there. So what you're going to do is, again, using your loop, flame it, cool it, spread organism all over the surface, just like you did for the antibiotics. Once that's done, of course, you flame your loop, cool your loop, dump it. OK, so now we have our quadrants, and we have the organism on there that we're going to test with these antiseptics and disinfectants. Well, how are we going to test these things? Pretty close to the same way we did with our, antibi our antibiotics, but since the antibiotics came with the antibiotic already on them, we can't use that. We need to make our own. And how we're going to do that is we have little bottles. I know there's lots of glare. But we have little bottles here with lots of little filter paper discs in here that are sterile. There's nothing on them. We're going to dip these into our antiseptic or disinfectant, and we're going to put them into our quadrants on a plate on top of our organism. It's pretty easy. But how are we going to do that? Problem is, these are sterile. We got to come up with some sterile tool to use. And the loop doesn't work too hot for this. So we're going to use forceps. But the forceps need to be sterile too. And you can't really flame these because by the time you get make them glow red, uh, they're really hot, and you burn yourself, and all sorts of other problems. So what we're going to do is this is 70% ethanol. It's denatured ethanol, so you can't drink it, but it does a pretty good job of sterilizing, for the most part, the forceps. But if we pull these out, we have a problem because now they're covered with ethanol. We gotta get the ethanol off. How are we gonna do that? Well, we could let it dry just let it air dry, but we'd be here forever. So there's a quicker way. Fire. Now you remember I told you that we're not going to flame it, but ethanol burns, so we can just burn it off. We can ignite it. So we take our forceps that have been sterilized, and we put them in a flame you'll notice that they burn very nicely. And then the flame goes out. And one thing you can't see is there's a few drops of water on here. The water is sterile. It's supposed to be there. It's not extra ethanol that didn't burn off. So just leave it. Now, a couple safety things. Please. When you do this, people like to turn them like this to watch the pretty blue flame. But of course, at that point, Ethanol is running down over your fingers while the ethanol is on fire. This is not a good thing. Also, the stuff in the beaker burns just as well as the stuff on the forceps. So we like to avoid igniting that. We can. If we did that and somebody said, oh, it didn't burn enough and didn't burn enough, they just set fire to the beaker. If we let it go long enough, the top of the beaker and whatever forceps we got in there can be nice and hot. We don't like that. Not at all. So, 
All you got to do is blow it out. But be careful. A big birthday candle blowout's going to blow burning alcohol all over the place. Again, excitement, mm, I don't really like. Okay? And we don't really need. So, what we've done is we've taken our forceps, we have managed to sterilize them, we've managed to ignite them and get the ethanol off. Now, we take the lid off. As I drop the cap, you reach in, you take out a filter paper disc. You dip the filter paper disc in something. In this case, I'm going to dip it in ethanol. And then shake it just a little bit to get rid of the extra stuff. And set it in a quadrant, gently in a quadrant, right on top of my organism. That's one. Put the forceps back in. Find your next antibiotic or antiseptic or disinfectant. Do it again. You can test four different antiseptics with this one organism on this one plate. And then you need to incubate them right side up because otherwise, once again, the discs fall off. And if the discs fall off, they don't do you a whole lot of good. It's fairly quick, fairly easy. And when you are done, what you're going to see, for example here, we've got Lysol. Lysol gives us a pretty good sized zone. Pine Sol doesn't give us as big a zone. But then again, Pine Sol tends to be a little tiny bit thicker than Lysol. The liquid hand sanitizer, not a real good deal. And Endure, huh, not at all. We'll see a different version here where, like Oasis, works a little bit on this organism, but not as much. Pine Sol works probably about the same, maybe even a little better on this organism than it did on the other one. Alcohol, which worked really well on the thumb, didn't seem to work hardly at all on this. Interesting, huh? The point on all this is you have to test individual organisms either with the antibiotics or the antiseptics. You can't say that one antiseptic or one antibiotic works the same on all organisms. I know we said that antiseptics and disinfectants are nonspecific, but it turns out they don't work equally on all organisms. There's some of them, some organisms that even like to grow on some of this stuff. They actually use it as a food source, which is kind of a problem.